All right, hello guys, and welcome to our fourth update for our winter forecast for the winter of 2019 to 2020. Right now, I'm looking at our overall forecast with question marks on it. At the end of this video, I will be revealing what's underneath all of those question marks, though. But before I get started with this video, though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather-related content, and also make sure to check out the links in the description for our social medias. Now let's get right into thing. We're looking at our precipitation forecast here and you can see we're going to be revealing it one layer at a time. I've done this on our channel before. So we're starting out with our slightly below average precipitation region that you can see is there for the southwestern United States extending from Oregon down through California, Nevada and Arizona. It's going to be a little bit more dry there than normal for those regions because we're going to be in a La Nina winter, not an El Nino winter. When we do have El Nino winters, we do see an above average of precipitation for these regions typically, and in the La Ninas, we don't see quite as much precipitation whatsoever. We do have a second shade of brown there, though, for that region in California, where we're going to see an even more noticeable amount of below average precipitation, and this is really going to lead to some dry conditions throughout wintertime. Again, La Nina, not El Nino, this is pretty common in these types of winters. Now let's take a look at the areas that we do have above average precipitation expected. You can see Montana down through the north central United States into the Great Lakes regions and even the mid-Atlantic and northeastern United States. We're all expecting to see slightly above average precipitation. This is because we're going to have two main storm tracks. We're going to have storms coming from Alberta down into the Dakotas and Montana and track kind of in a southeasterly direction towards the mid-Atlantic and northeast. And then we're also going to have nor'easters moving up the coast and they can actually merge sometimes. We've seen this happen before and then go up the coast. And this is going to lead to a lot of above average precipitation. Now we even have a second shade of green here, meaning we're going to have an even more moderate amount of above average precipitation for a lot of these regions. You can see Chicago down through into the areas like Ohio, Mid-Atlantic, and then back into the Northeast and New England once again. We're going to have even more above average precipitation where these two storm tracks could merge and intensify as they get closer and closer to the coast, obviously. Now let's get started with our temperature forecast for the winter of 2019 to 2020. We have below average temperatures expected for the north central United States, kind of central United States, Great Plains region, into the Great Lakes regions, mid-Atlantic and northeastern United States. That's going to be slightly below normal temperatures than you would normally expect during the winter months. We even have a second shade of blue here that extends again from those north central United States into the Great Lakes and northeastern United States. And even a third shade of blue here signaling that this is going to be far below average temperatures for a lot of these regions from the Dakotas, Minnesota, Wisconsin, Michigan into the interior New England regions of the United States. It could be really frigid at times here, guys, especially for Minnesota, Wisconsin, and Michigan. Uh, this could be quite the cold winter for you guys up there. Now, we have an above average temperature region here from Washington down through Oregon, California, and then into some of the south central United States like Arizona, New Mexico, and Texas as well. We even have a second shade of orange here for California, Arizona, New Mexico, and Texas as well, where we're going to see an even more moderate amount of above average temperatures. Again, when you're in that second shade, that's when it becomes a lot more noticeable. You'll probably look back at this winter and be like, okay, this was a quite warm winter for um, us if you live there. Now, before I get started with my snowfall forecast for this winter, I'd like to remind you that we will be doing a comment section challenge. You have to subscribe, like the video, and then leave a comment telling me where you live, what city, or what state, and I'll be picking three of those comments to put at the end of our next winter forecast and be giving you guys a shout out. I'll be showing last episode's winners at the end of this one, obviously, so stay tuned for that to see if you won. If you didn't, you can always try again, so go ahead and re-enter yourself this time as well. Now, looking at our snowfall anomalies, you can see we're starting out with our slightly above average snowfall region. It extends from Montana into the north central United States, Great Lakes region, mid-Atlantic region, and northeast region. These areas are going to be getting a little bit more snow than you're typically used to. So I would say average or slightly above average snowfall for this light blue region. 
Now, we do have an even bluer region here for the Great Lakes and through the northeastern United States and a little bit of the mid-Atlantic there as well. This is where we're going to be seeing even more above average snowfall than the other blue area. Uh, again, this is where the Clipper track and the Nor'easter track meets. So we're going to be seeing a lot of snowfall in this region this winter now, we have a third blue region, and this is kind of the bullseye region for this winter. Pennsylvania up through into New York and interior New England. This is where I expect a lot of big-time snowstorms to take place. And this is actually a quite similar region to where we saw some, some bigger snowstorms last winter, but not as many as I'm expecting this winter, with the exception of maybe interior Maine, because we did see a ton of snow there last winter. We could approach that or be about equal to that this winter. Now, we do have an area of slightly below average snowfall there for California. Just because of the lack of precipitation and above average temperatures, this is quite obvious that we will be dealing with some below average snowfall for those regions. Now, revealing our overall forecast, I'm going to be revealing them one at a time. Again, getting rid of that question mark and letting you know what I have to say about all of these regions. So let's get it started. First things first, more dry slash La Nina there for California and Nevada. It's going to be more dry than normal, and this is because of the La Nina again, so that's why I'm saying that. Now for our second region here, warmer than normal for this orange region that extends from Oregon down through Nevada and some of those lower four corner states. Uh, we're going to be average here for Texas, not, not a lot in either direction, not more dry, not more wet, not more cold, not more warm, kind of just average for you guys there, maybe a little bit warmer than normal, but besides that, quite average. Now for this blue region, we're going to be cold at times, it could warm up at times as well, that's kind of what I mean by that, we're going to be going warm, cold, warm, cold, so it's going to be all over the place for you guys there in that blue region, kind of the surrounding regions of the Rocky Mountains. And for the Rocky Mountains, we're going to be quite snowy this winter. I expect with those cool downs, we will get some pretty nasty low pressure systems. You guys have already seen that this fall time that we are going to be dealing with. Quite a bit of snowfall uh, and some snow systems as those cool downs come in. And then it will be absolutely frigid after the fact. You guys are seeing that right now, actually. The aftermath of a big time snow snowstorm there for Wyoming, Idaho, and Montana. Uh, now for our next region, stormy down there in Louisiana, some of those coastal Gulf regions, as well as uh, Florida. We're going to be dealing with quite stormy conditions. Thunderstorms is what I mean by stormy, by the way. It's going to be quite warm for you guys, as always, you know, lukewarm, not too cold, not too warm for you guys. It might cool down occasionally, but it's going to be pretty, pretty temperate, I would say, for you guys during the wintertime for the most part. Now to your north, we're going to be just wet. Uh, I, I would say wet, not because obviously we will be seeing rain in this region, but it's more wet than wintry. That's what I want to say. I guess that's probably what I should have put, but from Texas through northern Louisiana, then some of those uh, southern Gulf states, once again, we're going to be more wet than white for these regions. Now to your north, we're going to have the winter battle zone, and this is where we're going to be about, I would say just under 50-50 for wintry precipitation and uh, rainy precipitation. Uh, we're going to be dealing with some snow for these regions, some ice, some sleet, uh, and then obviously a lot of rain for this region as well. It's going to be a battle between the warmer precipitation types and the colder precipitation types. Now to your north, we're going to have Arctic invasions in this purple zone. A lot of very, very potent cold outbreaks, I think, for this region. Very, very similar to our 2013 to 2014 winters and our 2014 to 2015 winters. We saw a lot of that, and I think this could be a common occurrence this winter once again. Maybe not, qu not quite as intense as those winters, but it will be quite noticeable that we do have some Arctic invasions going on. Now to your north, it's going to be even more frigid for these regions, obviously. They're to your north, so we're expecting a colder than average winter for these regions, and on average it is colder for Montana, North Dakota, and Minnesota than those southern states. So it's going to be frigid with clippers in this region. A lot of smaller snowstorms that bring, you know, two to four to six inches of snow, but a lot of them, and that's what's going to lead to a lot of snow overall for you guys out there. Now, active lakes for the Great Lakes this year. I know this is one of the things that I've really switched in the winter forecast so far. I decided I think that it is going to actually be quite the active uh, Great Lakes season. I was thinking it would be more average than anything before, but we are seeing some very, very warm lakes, and this fall has started out very warm. So I think that this is 
you know, giving us a really good setup for potentially a big, big Great Lakes season here for our lake effect snow. Now, in this white region there for the mid-Atlantic and coastal northeast, we're expecting some big storms, uh, some big snowstorms, that is, uh, but not as many as our red region that we're going to get into in just a second. But uh, we could have some pretty decent snowstorms for this region, some pretty measurable snowstorms, and I can't wait to give you guys some forecasts for those as we reach the winter season. Now, for that red region, that's our worst of winter region from West Virginia up through Pennsylvania, New York, and New England. That's where I'm expecting the most snow compared to normal for that region. All the storm tracks match up to where I think that region could get, you know, be the most active throughout the winter. And that is a place that does occasionally see really, really, really good winters comparatively to normal. And I think this will be one of those winners. Anyway, guys, that's it for this forecast. Now we're going to get into our winners of the competition in the comment section. Again, leave a comment, like the video and subscribe, and you might win next winter forecast competition as well and be shouted out. But Jackie K said, I live in Chicago, Illinois. I would like a mild winter. I know a lot of people actually would love a crazy winter. So it's surprising to see somebody that would like a mild winter, but not surprising from somebody in Chicago as it gets very, very cold for those regions. Now, our second winner is David Sharon from Springfield, Missouri. Uh, thank you so much for commenting. And then also Blue Gaming from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania said, thanks for this. I love snow. So we see both sides of the spectrum, obviously. We saw somebody that wanted a mild winter and now somebody that loves snow and probably wants a crazy winter. I hope you enjoyed the forecast, all three of you. And I hope if you didn't win that you will enter for our next episode because I'm going to be picking three new winners, obviously. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video and I hope to see you guys in the next one. Have a great week, have a great month, and have a great winter, guys.